Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Trinity Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with and your spirit. spirit. And welcome wherever you are as we come together to celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This Feast of the Trinity reminds us that we too are called to live in community. For the times perhaps we notice we have not built community. For the times perhaps we have been a source of division. Let's now turn to God and ask Him for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And we pray together, giving glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. And, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity powerful in majesty. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand two tablets of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, 
And Moses made haste to bow his head toward the earth and worshipped. And he said, If now I have found favour in your sight, O Lord, let the Lord, I beg you, go in the midst of us. Although it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is your glorious, holy name, and to be highly praised and highly exalted forever. You are, you are to be praised, praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you upon the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you who sit upon cherubim and look upon the deeps, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, and to be sung and glorified forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brethren, rejoice, mend your ways, heed my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, I'm afraid to tell you that in that second reading, Paul is exhorting the Corinthians to do a lot of kissing, and in these times, we are not supposed to be kissing one another. So just be careful how much weight you give to Paul's exhortation this morning. I want to, this morning, this Feast of the Trinity, reflect on this wonderful icon of the Trinity, 
that was written by Andrew Rublev in 1425 in memory of Saint Sergius. And this icon tells us much about the Trinity. For example, we have a reminder there of Mamre, which is the tree where hospitality took place when Abraham welcomed the stranger. And curiously, there is also a place available at the bottom of this icon, which shows us that a table is set for four, and there are three that we see there, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There is also, if you look carefully at this icon, you will notice the cross of Christ. The beams of the cross are also formed in this wonderful icon. And this icon is for us a real insight into the most holy trinity. And what we are asked to do is to ourselves enter into this icon and listen to the conversation that is happening at this table. That conversation is beautifully laid out in the spiritual exercises of Saint Ignatius, where he has the Trinity in a meditation at the beginning of the second week, having a discussion, looking down on the earth, and as Ignatius puts it, seeing people who are sad and joyful, people who are being born, and some who are dying, some who are laboring hard, and others who are resting. And the Trinity sees all that is happening and says, how is it that we can assist humanity? How is it that we can come down and be with humanity to show them something greater? And eventually they decide together to send the Son, as we hear so beautifully in John's Gospel, that the Father sends the Son into the world. Not to come and do some magical thing, but to live amongst us. And by living amongst us to experience our human life and show us that our lives can be transformed and that there is another way, not just simply the way perhaps that we think, that there is a bigger picture. And I want to suggest on this Trinity Sunday that there are three lessons that we can learn from the Trinity. And the first one is something about their unity or their community. You know, we're living in very difficult times where our sense perhaps of community is being eroded, where we are told to stay away from one another, where perhaps the links that we need, the relationships that we need, are feeling a bit frayed wonderful image of a rope and when the end of a rope comes loose how it starts to fray and we can feel that our relationships are starting to fray in this difficult time and yet the Trinity reminds us that fundamentally we are called to live in community and that somehow it is in our communal living it is in our togetherness that there is strength and so even as we face these rather challenging and difficult times, it is our sense of community of reaching out of ourselves to form bonds and relationships in any way that we can that will ultimately be our strength. We perhaps are much more used to living in an individualistic society. And very often, it is this individualistic society that erodes all sense of our relationships, all sense of our need to be one another's keeper. The Trinity reminds us of our need for community. The second thing I want to suggest is that we see around this table a grappling, a dialogue. What should we do? And dialogue means that we have to listen 
and to speak. And Ignatius puts this wonderfully in his contemplation of the Trinity, how each person of the Trinity is able to say what they think and others listen. There's a genuine dialogue that is going on. And so too for us, a reminder that in our own lives, we too need to genuinely listen, not simply hear what others have to say, but genuinely listen to what others have to say. A dialogue is not one where there is a winner and a loser, but a dialogue is finding a way together that we can move forward. And so often perhaps in our world today with social media and all that we are involved in, there are many monologues, but very few dialogues. And so tension and division seems to get greater and greater. And so the Trinity asks us to recommit ourselves in our families and in our communities to a genuine dialogue where we listen to one another and then speak our truth as well. And finally, there's a wonderful generosity and an openness that we see portrayed in the Trinity. That the Father is open, is generous to sending the Son to come and to live among us. And so too, our Trinitarian life, if we are to truly model this Trinity, we are called to the same generosity, to the same openness, and to the same service of one another. And that is really at the heart, too, of our Christian faith. A real sense of service, of moving out of ourselves as the Trinity does, so that we can be at the service of others. In this time of lockdown, we have seen many people who have responded very generously in what they are doing for those who have been left destitute or those who for one reason or another have found themselves in very difficult and challenging places. And that generosity, that openness, that service is indeed when the Spirit is at work in us, that Spirit of Pentecost, and God is working through us and we are building in our own times the kingdom of God. And so as we remember today, as we celebrate our God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let's pray that we will renew our commitment to unity, that we would renew our ability and our commitment to dialogue wherever we are, not simply just out in the world, but even in the places that we live. And finally, that our unity and our dialogue would help us to reach out to others in service and in generosity. We are now going to make a profession of faith, and on this Trinity Sunday, let's pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so we come before our God on this great solemnity of the Trinity. We bring our prayers before God, knowing that God is always open and generous and willing to listen to us. For all Christians, that they may come to know, worship, and live in the presence of the community of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. hear us. For Pope Francis and the Church, that the Church would strive to live the life of community that is modelled for us by the Trinity, a community of mutual love, support, and service. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all leaders, that they would strive to rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who feel estranged from or rejected by the Christian community, that they would never doubt God's love for them, and that the Christian community would find ways of reaching out to them to heal their hurt and welcome them back. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are fearful, anxious, lost and lonely, that they may see in our Christian community a place where they can find peace, calm, love and companionship. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are struggling financially at this time, that God will give them hope, guide them to the resources that they need, and help them find safe employment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are sick and for all who grieve, that Christ will heal the sick, comfort those who grieve, and give eternal rest to all our loved ones who know, to all our loved ones who know and live in the community of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's also pray this morning in a special way for all those who have the Trinity as their patron and remember most especially the Jesuit parish here in Johannesburg. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our prayers. We make them in faith, knowing that you answer them in a time and place that you know best, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this offering of our service, and by it 
make us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, angels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be made to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. In giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you, you have, have set us free. free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Bhutti our Bishop, Duncan his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, 
Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. It was the Lord Jesus who taught us to call our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Father. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's now spend a moment praying for peace. Let's pray for peace in our homes, in our communities, and indeed our country and our world. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him, the one who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So thank you for joining us wherever you are joining us from. It's wonderful to be able to pray with you and I hope that you have a wonderful day and continue to celebrate this wonderful God of ours who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit, remembering that this relationship is lived out wherever we find ourselves. And so the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.